Hello, algebra students. Mr. Lawrence here with your next flipped lesson. This should be lesson three. We're still at the beginning of the year, and we're working on some more basics that you should have already mastered, but we'll go over them to make sure that you have them. And trust me, this one, the next couple of days are so important because second semester, we're going to be doing fractions that uh, have variables in them, and they are going to get very confusing if you don't understand the fundamentals. All right, the first thing I want to emphasize here is when we're adding fractions, we must have like denominators, okay? The denominators must be the same. The denominators are the downstairs of the fraction. Um, if you have like denominators, adding these is simple. All we're going to do is count. And I'm not going to say this is 2 sevenths plus 1 seventh. I'm going to say I have 2 sevenths. And then I have one more seventh. Well, how many sevenths do I have? Well, I have three altogether. I have three of these sevenths, right? So two sevenths could look like this. I've got two sevenths, and then I have one more seventh. Altogether, I have three of them. So three sevenths. Now, by the way, very important. Notice the denominator did not change. For example, if you had, let me see if I can find them in here. If you had two stars plus one star, all together you would have three stars, right? The star didn't change. It's still stars. Okay, the sevenths doesn't change. All right, let's go over here to problem number two. I have four twelfths and I have three twelfths. All together, I have seven twelfths. See how simple that is? Now, I'm going to come back to number three in one second. Subtraction is done very much the same way. If the denominators are like, you can just say, I have five sixths. Take away two sixths. Well, five minus two, three sixths. A better answer, three sixths simplifies to one half. Okay. Now, here, picture, visualize this. I have five sixths. Oops, that's one fifth. Excuse me. I have five sixths. So let me clone this infinitely. So I can turn it into five of them. There are five one-sixths, or more simply said, is five-sixths. If I take away two of them, be gone, sixth. Wait, I said leave. It won't leave. What will I do? Oh, no. I know. I shall erase you. And then I take another sixth and cast it aside. What am I left with? I'm left with three sixths. And three is half a sixth, so it simplifies to one half. Okay, now sometimes, and it, it behooves me that honors algebra students would do this, but it happened a lot last year. One half plus one half is two fourths. Can you think, pause the video, prove why one half plus one half cannot equal two fourths? It makes absolutely no sense. There is no sense in this answer, okay? Well, let's think about it. Let's simplify two-fourths. It simplifies to one-half, right? So what you're telling me is you took one fraction and you added another, the same fraction to it, not zero, and you came up with the same answer. That's what you just said. You just said a half plus a half is a half. That's like saying three plus three is three or five plus five is five. The only way you could do that is if we're adding zero to a number. Seven plus zero does equal seven. Zero is called the identity for addition, okay? Because when you add it to the original number, nothing happens. So if you're a person that thinks, well, you're supposed to add denominators, stop doing it. Okay, I've explained it two different ways. You're in honors algebra. This is not an acceptable mistake any longer. Okay, let's talk about adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to count by the larger of the two denominators. In problem number six, it would be three. And I'm going to stop when I get a number that the two goes into evenly. So I'm going to go three, six, stop. There it is. Six is my least common denominator. I'm going to change both of these fractions so that they have a denominator of six. And once they both have a denominator of 6, I'll be able to add them or subtract them just like I did on the front page. 
Okay, well, let me ask myself, how do I turn two into six? Well, I multiply it by three. But if I do it in the denominator, I have to do it in the numerator. By the way, I've got, I've got a gold star for anybody that can tell me what I just multiplied one half by. Stop and think about it. See if you can tell me in class tomorrow. What did I multiply one half by? Multiply. Listen to me. Multiply. All right. So I turned one half into three sixths. Now I have one third. How do I turn three into six? Well, I'm going to multiply it by two. But if I do it in the denominator, I have to do it in the numerator. And again, I got a gold star for anybody that can tell me what I multiplied one third by. It's a real simple answer, but it's so simple a lot of people don't even realize it. All right, three sixths and two sixths is five sixths. And there you go. So one half plus one third is the same as five sixths. All right, let me go over to this uh, problem seven here. And again, I'm going to take the larger of the two denominators and I'm going to count by it until I get one that the uh, other denominator goes into. So I'm going to go 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. Stop! All right. I need to turn both denominators into 45. Well, I'll have to do 9 times 5, and then I'll have to multiply by 5 upstairs. So this fraction is going to turn into 40, 40 fifths. And that is a 0, not a 6 there. I'm telling you that 8 ninths and 40 40 fifths mathematically are the same thing. Okay, 2 fifths. Well, I'm going to multiply by 9. I still want to get a denominator of 45. So I'm going to multiply by 9 in the numerator and the denominator. And I'm going to get 9 times 2 is 18. And then 45. I can go ahead and subtract. 45 minus 18, or 40 minus 18 gives some of you trouble. 40 minus 20 would be 20. But I didn't take 20 away. I only took 18 away. So my answer would be 22. All right. Over 45. I'll check to see if it simplifies. I don't believe it does. The factors of 22 are 1 and 22, 2 and 11, and that's it. And none of those numbers goes into 45. There is your answer. All right. One more example. Okay, this time, let's say we have something like three uh, sevenths, and I want to add uh, one fourteenth to it. Okay, because uh, some of you are thinking you should always multiply your denominators together to get your LCD. That will give you a common denominator. It will not give you the least common denominator in every situation. So again, I'm going to count by the larger denominator, fourteen, and I'll stop because 7 goes into 14. Now this fraction here, I'm not going to do anything to because it already has the common denominator of 14. So I'm going to do 1 14th. This one here, I'll multiply the denominator by 2 and then I'll multiply the numerator by 2. And it'll turn into 6 14ths. Yeah, 6 14ths and 1 14th, 7 14ths. And that simplifies to one half. And there you go. All right. So uh, that's a brief lesson on adding and subtracting fractions with like and unlike denominators. Uh, there will be an extra practice video attached to this where you can try some on your own. All right, Mr. Lawrence, signing off. Good night, everybody.